Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. Oh, yippee skippy. It's been eight years since the last Hunger Games movie was released in 2015, but hold on to your hats, folks, because another one is being released next month in November. And this next one has probably one of the longest titles that I have seen in a long time. The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And no, that does not roll off the tongue. The title itself is 52 characters long, but it isn't actually the longest movie title to have ever existed. It's a longer title than the one for 2001's The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, which is 49 characters long. But it's shorter than the titles for the following movies. 2003's Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, which is 54 characters long. 1984's The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, which is 58 characters long. 2007's The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford, which is also 58 characters long. 1964's Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, which is 68 characters long. 1996's Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood, which is 72 characters long. 2006's Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan, which is 83 characters long. 2003's Easy Riders, Raging Bulls, How the Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Generation Saved Hollywood, which is 90 characters long. And finally, 1991's Night of the Day of the Dawn of the Sun of the Bride of the Return of the Revenge of the Terror of the Attack of the Evil Mutant Hellbound Flesh-Eating Subhumanoid Zombified Living Dead Part 2 in Shocking 2D, which is 213 characters long. Thus, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is the ninth longest movie title of all time, but I don't think that's going to help it at the box office. And the only reason that the title is that long is because when dystopian action-adventure author Suzanne Collins, who wrote the original Hunger Games books, decided to write another novel in the same universe, she named it The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. The production company Lionsgate, which owns the movie rights to the Hunger Games novels, added the Hunger Games to the beginning of the title to ensure that people unfamiliar with the original title of Collins' fourth Hunger Games book knew that it was part of that universe. But guess what? This fifth Hunger Games movie is not a continuation of the most recent movie from 2015, The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. No. Collins' fourth Hunger Games novel is considered to be a spin-off and a prequel as it takes place 64 years before the events that are described in her first Hunger Games novel. And do you want to know something, folks? Prequels typically aren't as good and don't typically do as well as the original movies, and there are multiple examples. First, there was 1979's Butch and Sundance, The Early Days, which was nowhere near as good as the original 1969 movie, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Then there was George Lucas's Star Wars prequel trilogy that began in 1999 and ended in 2005 that was not as popular or well-received as the original trilogy. Then there was Peter Jackson's The Hobbit movie trilogy that began in 2012 and ended in 2014, which was also not regarded as being as good as his Lord of the Rings trilogy that he directed in 2001 through 2003. And finally, there were the prequels that ran from 2016 through 2022. J.K. Rowling's Fantastic Beasts movies that were set in her much-beloved Harry Potter universe, but were both spin-offs and prequels that took place some 70 years before his adventures. And unfortunately, they were nowhere near as good as the original Harry Potter movies. In fact, last year's movie, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, which I had talked about in several videos that I had released last year, was not only the worst of the three Fantastic Beasts movies, it was the first Harry Potter-based movie to flop in theaters and effectively ended the prequels because J.K. Rowling had been planning to write five. 
Suzanne Collins' original Hunger Games trilogy of novels were popular among teenage and young adult readers, which is why the four movies that were based on them and were released from 2012 through 2015 were popular enough that they all actually made money at the box office. The fourth novel that the upcoming fifth movie is based on wasn't as well received by critics, even though 500,000 copies were sold in its first week after publication. But how does the fourth novel, 2020's The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, compare with the original trilogy? In terms of length, it is the longest of the four books with nearly 157,900 words. The first three books, Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and The Mockingjay, had around 99,700 words, 101,600 words, and 100,300 words, respectively. That's a total of around 454,500 words, of which nearly 34.4% comes from the fourth novel. In other words, the fourth novel represents more than one-third of the combined length. But what about awards? The original Hunger Games novel won a total of 54 literary awards between 2008 and 2011. The second novel, Catching Fire, won 14 awards between 2009 and 2010. The third novel, The Mockingjay, has won around 9 awards between 2010 and 2011. That's a total of 77 awards. But how many awards did 2020's The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes win? Zero. Yes, you heard me right. It hasn't won any awards at all, so critics aren't that impressed with it. But how about book sales? As of April 2023, according to Scholastic, more than 3.5 million copies of The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes have been sold in North America, and it's available in 39 different languages in 39 territories. But as of 2014, the original Hunger Games trilogy of novels had sold over 65 million copies in the U.S. alone. Over 28 million copies of the original The Hunger Games novel, over 19 million copies of Catching Fire, and over 18 million copies of The Mockingjay. Further, the original three novels have been translated into 51 languages and sold in 56 different territories to date. So the 3.5 million copies that have been sold for The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes in North America as of April of this year only represents no more than around 5.1% of all the Hunger Games books sold. And that doesn't actually bode too well for the upcoming movie, now does it? Now, before I show what the predicted domestic opening weekend box office numbers look like for the fifth Hunger Games movie, let's take a look at the domestic opening weekend box office that was earned by the original four movies that were released between 2012 and 2015. As illustrated in this chart, the best domestic opening weekend box office to date was for the second Hunger Games movie at $158.1 million, which was higher than the first movie's $152.5 million, but also higher than the diminished earnings that the third and fourth movies experienced, $121.9 million and $102.7 million, respectively. And what are the predicted domestic opening weekend box office numbers for The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? According to Box Office Pro, somewhere between $35 million to $45 million. Yes, you heard me right. That entire range is not even half as much as the lowest domestic opening weekend box office for the original four movies, which was the fourth movie, Mockingjay Part 2. So what does this mean for the fifth movie's final domestic box office? To get an idea as to how much that might be, we'll first look at the history of the original movie's average weekly drops as illustrated in this next chart. Interestingly, there's very little variance between their four values, which average out to 36.8%. And as this next chart shows, the standard deviation between the four movies' average weekly drops was only around 0.6%. So given how incredibly small that standard deviation is, I decided that it was far too small to project how this fifth movie may do, given that it's both a spin-off and a prequel, which we all know means it will probably perform much worse than the original movies. 
And as this next chart shows, the final domestic box office for the original four movies mimicked the domestic opening weekend by continually dropping after the second movie. So I decided to multiply that 0.6 standard deviation by 8 to create a broader range of possible outcomes for this fifth movie. So 4.8% above and below the franchise's average weekly drop of 36.8%, is a range from 32.04% to 41.56%. And when I use that range to project the possible final domestic box office for the movie, I get the following range of numbers. $84.2 million at the low end, $108.7 million at the mid-range, and $140.3 million at the upper range. And guess what? That's barely half as much as what 2015's Mockingjay Part 2 earned domestically with its $281.7 million. That's a really bad sign, folks. And that high-end projected final domestic box office of $140.3 million was based on a much lower average weekly drop than the four movies that preceded it, which I find highly unlikely. For this movie, I strongly believe that its average weekly drop in box office is far more likely to be above the franchise average than below it. The mid-range projection of $108.7 million, which was based on the franchise's average weekly drop, may be a lot closer to how this fifth movie may perform, and that's only 38.6% of Mockingjay Part 2's final domestic box office earnings of $281.7 million. And that brings us to the fifth movie's possible final global gross box office, which I can project by looking at the franchise's overall average domestic share, which is currently 49.21%. And the current standard deviation for the franchise's domestic shares is 7.74%, which is rather broad because the current domestic shares range from a high of 60.19% to a low of 43.57%. And to project what the movie's final global gross box office might be, I'll use a range of possible domestic shares that are one standard deviation above and below the franchise average. So that range is from 41.47% to 56.95%. And the resulting projected final global gross box office values range from a low of $147.9 million to a high of $338.3 million dollars with a mid-range of around $243.1 million. But the most likely value is the one calculated with the franchise average weekly drop in box office and the franchise average domestic share, and that value is $220.8 million. So what does the final global gross box office for the first four movies look like? As this chart shows, they range from a low of $646.5 million dollars to a high of $864.9 million. In other words, the final global gross box office for Hunger Games' The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes may only range from between 22.9% to around 52.3% of the $646.5 million that Mockingjay Part 2 earned back in 2015. So I'm going to have to say right now that I don't believe that this fifth Hunger Games movie has a snowball's chance in hell of breaking even. But I have to preface that by saying that the production budget for the fifth movie hasn't yet been published by any media site, which I find rather interesting given that the movie opens in less than a month. But Lionsgate doesn't want to share that piece of information. Historically, the production budgets for the four original Hunger Games movies ranged from a low of $80 million to a high of $160 million. And their corresponding estimated break-even points range between values that are 2.5 to 3.0 times their respective production budgets to account for the 50% of gross ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, as well as the additional costs of marketing the movie and other miscellaneous costs that the studio pays above and beyond the production budget. So for the original 2012 Hunger Games movie with its $80 million production budget, its estimated break-even point ranged between $200 million to $240 million. And for 2015's Mockingjay Part 2, which had the highest production budget of the four at $160 million, its estimated break-even point ranged between $400 million to $480 million. So if the production budget for The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is only around $80 million, then it might have a slight chance of breaking even. 
But if it's closer to $160 million or even higher than that, then the movie has virtually no chance of breaking even. And since Lionsgate doesn't want to be upfront about the movie's production budget, that tends to suggest that it's rather high. So they know the movie is going to flop and they just don't want to admit it. That's what it boils down to. And part of that may have to do with who stars in this fifth Hunger Games movie, Rachel Zegler. Yes, Rachel Zegler is the top billed star for this movie. And I'm sure that she'll be playing a strong woman who don't need no man, just like she's going to be in Disney's upcoming live-action gray-swapped and very feminist Snow White movie that's slated to be released in 2024 amidst a lot of controversial comments that Zegler has been making about Disney's original 1937 Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs movie that has been loved by tens of millions of people over the 86 years since it was released in theaters. Zegler is not a popular actress, and she has yet to be in a movie that actually breaks even at the box office. The 2021 musical remake of West Side Story that she starred in was a huge box office flop, as was Shazam! Fury of the Gods that she was also in and premiered earlier this year. So that's not a good box office track record, and her newest endeavor, The Hunger Games' The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, is going to be yet another box office flop. So while you may not agree with my assessment of this newest Hunger Games movie, don't be shocked if it loses a ton of money. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Outloud Geek.